In this video, we're going to learn how to improve the features of your graphing calculator by actually writing our own little simple program to do a problem for us that the calculator isn't set up to do as, as it is set up originally from the manufacturer. So in this problem, it says use the information provided to determine the sample size needed to construct a confidence interval to estimate the population mean. So we're trying to determine the sample size needed. So this is a problem related to sample size. Now our calf graphing calculator does not have a feature in it to do that. So the formula for the sample size is the following. If you're trying to estimate the population mean, the formula is this. It's actually z alpha divided by 2 times sigma, the population standard deviation, divided by the margin of error. And all of that is squared when you're done. There's another important detail. We must always round this up, right? So we want to round up if there's any kind of a decimal. Okay, so that's a little something to keep in mind. All right, so let's write a very simple, basic program in our calculator to solve this for us. And you can just go back and use that program anytime you'd like. All right, so let's see how this is done. For our program, all we have to do is enter a formula and make the calculator do the formula for us. That's actually a really simple program. So what you're going to do is you're going to press the program button in your graphing calculator. Now you can see I have a whole bunch of programs in my calculator. There, each of these is a program that I wrote to do a special type of problem. So there's some pretty interesting stuff in my calculator and some of the programs are pretty complicated. But I took programming when I was in school so I know how to program a computer and so I was able to write more complicated programs. What I want to show you to do is something simple that anyone can learn to do using this graphing calculator. So we're going to go over here to where it says new. In your calculator you very well may not have any programs yet, but if you go over to where it says new and then press enter, it's going to allow you to name your new program. So I want to name it something useful, so I'm going to name it sample size. And now I'm not going to be able to fit all of that probably, so I'm going to do like sample size or something. So I'll, I'll write that as, it's got right now it's already set on the alpha, you can see a blinking A. So I'm going to push this LN key because above it there's a little green S. And I push that I'll get an S. And then there's an A here, right? And then the M is here on the division key. So I'll do something like this, you know, SAMP. And then for size, maybe I'll just do SZE if I can get all those letters in. So I'll do S and then Z, and then see if it'll give me one more E. Yeah, it looks like it could even have done more, so I'm gonna actually go back over here and I'm gonna do S, I, Z, E. All right, so now I'm able to type in the full thing. You can see when it went to like that checkered symbol, that means I'm done with words. I don't have any more letters left. So I'll hit enter, and now my new program is called SAMP Size. All right, now what I want to do first is I just want to be able to enter into the calculator the values that are going to be plugged into the program. So what I'm going to do is tell the calculator to give me a place to enter those values. So you press your program key, and in order to input values, you're going to go to where it says I.O. So after you press the program key, you'll move over to where it says I.O. And we have this option number two, it says prompt. So we're going to take that, we're going to highlight it, hit enter, and the first line of my new program says prompt now. Now it's, I'm going to tell it what to prompt us for. In other words, I'm going to look at these three variables and give them symbols. So let's go ahead and give the, um, the calculator, I'm going to give it the uh, confidence level instead of the Z, and we'll explain why. So I'm going to call the confidence level C. So I'm going to push alpha C. So I press the alpha key and I press C, and what it's going to do is it's going to prompt me for a variable called C, and I'm going to know that stands for confidence level. Then I'm going to press the comma key, and then I want to tell it to do sigma, so I'm going to have to enter that in. I'm going to say alpha S for sigma, S for sigma. So again, I have confidence level, sigma, then comma, and then I'm going to look for this E value, right? So the E value is actually going to be here. So I'll do alpha E. So now I have the letter E. And for me now, that's going to mean C for confidence level, S for standard deviation, and E for error. I'll press enter now to move to the next line of my program. So what that first line is going to do is it's going to basically allow me to enter values. You know, So the calculator is going to ask me for what's the confidence level, what's the standard deviation, what's the error. Now I know this is not a confidence level. This is a Z alpha divided by 2 critical value. So I'm going to, you know, basically by recognizing that I'm giving it the confidence level, I'm going to have the calculator do this for me. 
So all the rest of the calculator, all the rest of the stuff is going to go behind the scenes and at the end I'll display my answer. So the next thing I want the calculator to do is I want it to come up with the Z alpha divided by 2 value for me. So I'm going to make it do that for me. I'm going to say, tell the calculator just what I would do by hand with the graphing calculator. I'm going to say second vars. I'm going to take option 3. And so now it's telling the calculator that during this program it should run the inverse norm feature. And then it should do 1 minus, just like we learned before, I'm going to tell it to do the alpha divided by 2. Now, my alpha is complicated because that's actually the confidence level divided by 2. So I'm going to do a special trick here. This, this will work for us. Instead of doing the 1 minus alpha divided by 2 that we normally do, because it's a confidence interval and we're going to be looking for z alpha divided by 2 in every case here, I'm going to actually do something simpler. I'm going to do 0.5 plus the confidence level, so alpha c, and then I'm going to divide it by 2. So this will do the same thing as the 1 minus alpha divided by 2 that we did before. This works for confidence intervals, so I'm going to use that instead. It's just a little easier to enter in the calculator. And then I'm going to do one last thing. This is going to give me that critical value that I'm looking for, but I'm going to tell it to store the result of that in a new variable. I'm going to call that variable alpha z. So I'm going to store the results into z. So now I've taken my confidence level, C, and I've converted it into Z behind the scenes in the calculator. And the calculator will now store that Z value in there in my calculator. My next step is to take these three variables and plug them into the formula. And this is the easiest part of the program. I'm literally just going to copy what I see there. I'm going to open a parenthesis. I'm going to do alpha Z. Remember now Z from the earlier line is going to be my critical Z value, right? And then times, now I entered my standard deviation as S originally in the calculator, so I'm going to do alpha S. And then finally I'll divide that by alpha E, E being the margin of error. I'll close that up and I will square the result. And at this point I have my, my solution basically, but I do want it to round up. Now I could force the calculator to do the rounding. There's probably a feature in there. But, uh, you know, without making this too complicated, I'm just going to leave it there and we'll have to remember to round it up ourselves. So I'll just end the program here at this point. And the way to do that is to just hit, um, well, it'll hit enter first to get it to go to the next line. And what we want to do now is make the calculator tell us the answer that it just came up with. So I'm going to actually go back up to this line because I left something out. I'm going to store this value in the variable x in my calculator. So I'm going to store it into x then hit enter and go to that next line and then I'm going to tell the calculator to display that answer x. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go push the program button one more time. I push program and I go over to where it says input output. I'm going to go down to where it says display option 3. And then I'm going to tell it to display the x value we just came up with. All right, so now I'm going to quit out of here, second quit. I just want to cover a little thing. What happens in the process of writing that program if you messed up and you, you exited out of the program button somehow and you ended up back here to your regular screen? The way you would go back and edit a program is just push the program menu, go to where it says edit, and then you can scroll through until you find your program. I have so many programs, it's probably faster to go backwards here for me. I'm going to go backwards and I'll find the one that says SAMP size. It's in alphabetical order, so it should be here in the S's. And there I see it's SAMP size. And if I hit enter there on the edit, it allows me to go back in and change anything I need. All right, so let's test our program finally. So I'm going to run our program. So I, I quit out of there. I did second quit to escape. Now that we've entered our program into our calculator, let's run it. So I got out of the screen before by hitting second quit. I'm going to push program to actually put on the program itself or to start running it. Now, in the upper left hand corner in your calculator, there's this highlighted part that says execute. That's where you want to be when you want to run the program. Now, for most of you, if it's your first program, it'll be number one and you would just hit enter at that point to start it up. I have to actually find mine in the list. So I'm going to go to where the S's are and I'm going to look for where it says sample size. Okay, so there it is, sample size. I'm going to hit enter. And now it's waiting for me to press enter again, so I'm going to press enter again to start it. And it asks us for our first variable. It wants the confidence level. Now our confidence level is 95%, so we're going to enter it as a decimal, 0.95, and then press enter. Then S is the population standard deviation, or the standard deviation in this case, so we're going to enter that. And that's given to us in the problem. It says as 4, so let's enter 4 for the standard deviation. 
All right, and then lastly, it wants the error, the margin of error. So we can see here in the problem, the margin of error is 0.19, right? 0.19. So let's enter 0.19 in our calculator. And when we hit enter, we have our solution. That's our sample size. And remember, we must round up. So we're going to call that 1703 as the solution. Now, if it's your first time running a program, of course, you want to check its results to make sure that it is, in fact, correct. I happen to know, happen to know that the z-alpha divided by 2 value is 1.96 or so for the 95% um, confidence interval. And then if that's your z-alpha divided by 2, we'll multiply by 4. And then, oops, so times 4, and then divide that by the error of 0.19. When we have that all in there, we're going to square the results. And the answer turns out to be, again, 1702. In this case, our calculator says 0.64. That's because actually the program is using the more accurate uh, value for z-alpha divided by 2. So in fact, this is the uh, best value for z-alpha divided by 2 the calculator is using. We're using the rounded off version here in the table. But either way, both numbers round up to 1703, and that's the solution. So it looks like our program works quite well.